All right, moving on now uh, in L1A credit three to lesson 7.2. Uh, which is using functions to solve one variable equations. And we're going to be start on page 46 with number problem number one. It says, Victoria wants to hire a babysitter for the weekend for her three children. She has two choices. Babysitter A charges $10 per child and $5 per hour. Uh, well, babysitter B charges $15 per child and $2 per hour, write a function for each babysitting service, uh, when will they charge the same amount? All right, so there's kind of a lot of information going on here. Let's uh, take uh, take the information and decontextualize it here. Uh, so she has, first of all, she has three children. And so let's go ahead and write that down. Uh, she, has, she has two choices. Babysitter A is $10 per child. and five dollars uh, per hour let's make this a little bit neater here and then babysitter b is fifteen dollars per child so more there but only two dollars per hour okay now, it's, it might sound like we have two different variable amounts because we have two different PERs, PERs here, $10 per child, $5 per hour, per child per hour. <clears throat> the difference is, is we know what the charge is for the children because we know how many children there are. There are three. So, for example, babysitter A is $10 per child, but times the three that's $30. So that's a fixed amount because we know that there's three children. And that's not going to change. Uh, likewise, babysitter B, $15 per child. We multiply that by three, and that's $45. So it sounds like a variable amount is actually just is a, is a fixed amount. All right, so now uh, what we're going to do is write the functions. I'm going to use function notation just to get used to that. we got f of x our, our, for babysitter A. So it's $30 for the children. That's a flat fee because even though it's per child, we know how many children there are. So that's a flat fee of 30 bucks, but then plus $5 per hour. So every hour it's $5. So, you know, one hour is $5, two hours would be five times two is 10, uh, et cetera. All right now, uh, babysitter B, similar situation, we'll call that G of X and that is the flat fee of $45 for the three children plus $2 per hour. So notice what's going on here. Babysitter B charges more up front the $45, but charges less per hour. Uh, so what's going to happen is even though to begin with babysitter A is less, since babysitter A is charging more per hour, at some point, the amount babysitter A charges is going to catch up to or equal babysitter B, and that's what we have to find out how long that takes. Uh, so uh, when will they charge the same amount? So all we do is we take the two functions and set them equal to one another. So we've got 30 plus 5x equals, when does that equal 45 plus 2x? All right, so we have variables on both sides, the 5x and the 2x. We'd like to get rid of the smaller one, so we're going to subtract the 2x to both sides. And we get 30, 5 minus 2 is 3, equals 45, and of course those cancel out. So now our only variable is on the left, so that's where our focus is. We are going to divide by 3, but first of all, we've got to get rid of that minus 30, so we subtract 30 to both sides. And we get 3x <coughs> equals 45 minus 30 is 15. x is being multiplied by 3, so now we divide by 3. And then x equals 15 divided by 3, which is 5. So to put this in context, after 5 hours, both babysitters would charge the same amount. We can plug that in to see. Uh, here we plug in 5 for x. 5 times 5 is 25. 30 plus 25 is $55. And then same thing for babysitter B, 2 times 5 is 10, 45 plus 10 is also 55. So uh, we know that the answer is, because they only ask us to find out how many hours it will take, it will take 5 hours. But if they did ask us, what would the charge be for both babysitters, that would be $55. But 
Again, just the hours was asked, so that's all we have to put. <clears throat> all right, let's take a look at number two on the same page there. Lindsay needs a jeweler, jeweler, can't even say that word, to repair her earrings. Jeweler A is offering her services for an initial $126 uh, dollars in addition to $15 per hour. Jeweler B is offering his services for an initial $150 in addition to $12 per hour. Which equation can be used to determine the number of hours for both jewelers to be equal to each other? All right. So here, and then below it says we have it says when will they charge the same amount? So same thing, they just break it apart into two questions. All right, so we've got jeweler A and jeweler B. All right, so this one, a little bit more straightforward than the last one, I think. Uh, jeweler A is $126 plus $15 per hour. So if we let, I think they're using H there. Yeah, H. So $126 plus 15H. So $126 is the initial fee. Uh, you can say a flat fee uh, plus $15 for every hour that they work on it. So again, the per hour, that's where the variable goes. Wherever you see a flat fee or a fee or initial fee, uh, that's what's not going to have the variable. And jewelry B, um, they're $150, $150 plus $12, and then they charge $12 per hour, so $150 plus $12H. So for jewelry B, the initial fee is $150, and then they charge $12 per every hour. So a very similar way that we set up A and B. So we want to know when will they charge the same amount. So we just set the two expressions equal to one another. Again, we could have called this f of x and g of x, but we don't need to do that. So we're just going to set them equal to one another. And then if you look at your answer choices, this one would match uh, answer choice uh, B. Now you might notice there it has these reversed. But remember the commutative property the order you add something doesn't matter. So 126 plus 15H is the same as 15H plus 126. And likewise, 150 plus 12H, same as 12H plus 150. All right. So again, variables on both sides. We're going to get rid of the smaller ones. So we're going to subtract the 12H to both sides. And we got 126. 15 minus 12 is 3. Bring down the 150, and then those these cancel out. H is on the left side, so that's where our focus is. We are going to divide by three. But first of all, let's get rid of that minus or that 126 by minusing it or subtracting it to both sides. Then we get 3H equals, we subtract these, we get 24, and then we divide by three, and we get H equals eight. So what does H equals eight mean? It means after eight hours is when they will charge the same amount. And just like with the babysitter problem, if you want to know what that amount is, you can plug in H and, and work that out. But they don't ask us here, so we will not do that. All right, so now um, it's important to know how to solve these algebraically and graphically and everything. But we do have tools to help us out. And one of those <coughs> tools is uh, Desmos. And we are going to now use Desmos to help us solve these next uh, couple problems. So... Um, let's take a look at, uh, we're going to go over to page 48, and this one is not a word problem. We'll get back to those eventually. Uh, but we're looking at number one, where f of x equals 6x minus 6, and then g of x equals negative 2x plus 10. Now, we could graph these by hand. We've done that before. But we want to introduce technology, and once we know how to do things, we want to use that technology to help us speed things up. So we're going to go to Desmos.com. Again, that's D-E-S-M-O-S.com. And um, so when you go to – let me go ahead and share the screen here. Um, let's see. I think – Make sure we're sharing the right one. Hold on a second. Okay. 
All right, so you go to desmos.com and you should see uh, you should see this screen here, and then you're going to click on where it says graphing calculator in the middle. And again, Desmos is amazing because it's very intuitive, and even the things that you need to learn when you get into more advanced things are, are pretty straightforward. Uh, so for our first equation, we're going to use f of x. Uh, we have f of x equals 6x minus 6. So we're just going to enter that in. Uh, f of x, you could just use y if you want to, by the way. It just makes it easier to do that. Uh, I'm going to just use f of x just to show you that you can. And so we have 6x minus 6. And then it's beautiful because you can see the line is already graphed for you. Press enter. And now we're going to enter the other equation, which was g of x equals um, negative 2x plus 10. So negative 2x plus 10. There we go. And so we've got the two equations entered. Make sure that they look like that. Make sure that you've uh, typed them in correctly. And now uh, we're looking for when the two lines intersect. Because remember, on the first line, the red, in my case, the colors on yours may be different. But on the red line, every point on that red line, that was our first. And by the way, if you forget which color represents which equation, they color code it for you next to the equations that you typed in. So you can refer to that. So every point on the red line is a solution to 6x minus 6, and every point on the blue line is a solution to negative 2x plus 10. Only that one point, and I'm kind of circling it with my cursor there, is where the lines intersect, is that a solution to both equations? And sometimes when you hover on it, it gives you the answer. If not, just kind of put the cursor close to that, and then click on that, and then voila, it gives you the solution, which is 2 and 6. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So the solution is x equals 2, y equals 6, or the ordered pair 2, 6. Which means if we plugged in 2 for x, we would get 6 for y or f of x. You can see it here. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. And then over here, negative 2 times 2 is 4, uh, negative 4. Negative 4 plus 10 is also 6. We can verify it if we want. And not just verify it, but help us to understand what that represents. And that's all you got to do. It's just that simple. All right, let's go to number two, and we'll probably even try and speed this up a little bit just to show you how fast it can go. Um, to get rid of the equations, you can just you know backspace and retype them or just X them out if you don't want them there. <coughs> and then, so on number two, I'm just going to use Y now just because it's easier. We get uh, F of X or Y equals one-half X minus four. And you know what? Uh, probably let me use f of x just so it doesn't create any confusion. But you can just use y. That's fine. All right. So how do we do a uh, one half? So what we do is we do one. We do the slash key, and that tells Desmos it's very intuitive that you want a fraction. You press the two. But now you have to get out of the fraction. So you're going to use the right arrow, and that takes you out of the fraction. Then you're going to put in the x, and then it's one half x minus four. So there is that one. Next is g of x. Oops. I'm not very good at typing x. There we go. Uh, 2x minus 1. So 2x minus 1, a little more straightforward. So again, uh, I'm glad this happened because it shows uh, what often will happen. Um, the intersection is outside the screen, so you just kind of move things around so you can uh, see where the two lines intersect. We're going to try. Well, hovering doesn't work, so we'll click on it. And there we go. There's our solution, negative 2 and negative 5. So our, the solution for that one would be negative 2 and negative 5. And that's it. That's all you do for those. So that's how you use Desmos. Again, rewatch it if you want to go into a little more uh, detail with it. All right. Now, we're going to use Desmos also for these problems here. I'm going to actually temporarily um, go back to the full screen. Um, because we have to complete some tables first. They want us to complete the tables. And uh, so let's go ahead and do that. By the way, you can actually do tables on Desmos as well, but we have to type everything in there. So we're just going to complete them on our own here. And let's actually graph up here because we're not going to use that graph. And let's see, we have, so number one on page 49, We've got x, 
with values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then we get f of x is uh, 30 plus 5x. And so what they're trying to get you to see here is from a table point of view of what when we have the solution. So we're, we're going to, this is going to go quicker than you might think, hopefully, um, because we're going to look for some patterns here. So first of all, we're going to plug in 0 for x. We've got 30 plus 5 times 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 30 plus 0 is 30. And then next, we have x is 1. So we got 30 plus 5 times 1. 5 times 1 is 5. And then 30 plus 5 is 35. Just making sure we have the equations entered correctly. Yep, that's right. And then next we have 2, so 30 plus 5 times 2, 5 times 2 is 10. And then 30 plus 10 is 40. Now, I want you to notice something here. Notice these are going up by 5, 30, 35, 40. And that's no coincidence. It's going to go up by whatever this slope or this rate of change amount is. And so notice that was 5, so we're going up. After we have the first number, we just go up by 5. So we can just keep following that pattern, 45, 50. 55 and 60. All right, so likewise over here, same thing. We've got 45 plus 2 times 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 45 plus 0 is 45. And let's do one more just to show the pattern. We got 45 plus 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 45 plus 2 is 47. And notice this went up by 2, and that was our slope or our rate of change here. So we're just going to keep going by 2s. 49, 51, 53, 55, and 57. So from the table, um, uh, uh, what would the solution be? Well, the solution would be for the input value of x that we get the same output values. So let's take a look at our output values. So not the same, not the same, still not the same. Getting closer, ah, there it is. So our solution is x equals 5. And so the solution is when x equals 5, they have the same amount, which is they have the same solution, which is 55. So the, the point 555 would be our solution. Now let's take a look at this from Desmos' point of view. We're just going to quickly do that uh, in order because they want us to graph it. But for the graph, again, we're just going to use Desmos, and you can just uh, copy that on to your uh, – packet using the cami tools. All right, so back into Desmos. And we're going to get rid of these equations. And we've got, uh, let's see, f of x is 30 plus 5x. Let's see, I can't. The hardest part for me is typing these in. And then uh, g of x is 45 plus 2x. Okay, so again, um, we don't even see the other graphs. We're really going to have to zoom out here. But as I zoom out, you can see the other one that was over here to the left, kind of off the screen. But we move, we zoom, and then as soon as we can see where they intersect, we have what we need. Uh, let's uh, verify our solution on the board and also verify that we typed in our graphs correctly, our equations correctly. And sure enough, there it is. X is 5. 555 is where they intersect. So we can see... Now, the relation between the table to find a solution and the, and the graph. All right, so now we're going to do one more like that, uh, right below that, number two. And we are going to, for the moment, stop presenting so we can see the board better. And let's go ahead and do that one. There's the eraser. All right, so our first equation is... Uh, f of x equals 100 plus 25x. And then g of x equals uh, 55 plus 10x. And then our x values over here are from 0 to negative 4. So going down, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. All right, now, you got to be careful with patterns here because the x values are going 
backwards or going down. So let's show you how that works. We've got 100 plus 2 times 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 100 plus 0, whoops, that shouldn't be 2, that should be 25. So 100 plus 25 times 0, but that's still 0, and 100 plus 0 is 100. Now negative 1, we got 25 times negative 1, which is negative 25. 100 minus 25 is 75. So notice when the values are going down by 1, the x values are going down by 1, we're still using this slope or rate of change, but the difference is, is instead of going up, we're going down. So we're going down by 25, which would be 50. 25 and then 0. All right, so now let's go over here. We've got 55 plus 10 times 0. 10 times 0 is 0. 55 plus 0 is 55. And then let's show this one too. 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. 55 minus 10 is 45. And notice here that the slope is 10, and we're going down by 10 because, again, the x values are going down by 1. So we go 55, 45, 35, 25, and then 15. So we're looking for the, uh, when the values of the two functions are the same. So let's go ahead and box those to compare them. So not the same, not the same, not the same. There we go. They're the same. And where are they the same? At negative 3 and 25. So when we graph this now, and we're going to, again, we're going to use Desmos, we're going to expect to see the intersection of the two lines at negative 3, x equals negative 3, y equals 25. And of course, if that didn't happen, then we'd want to, you know, examine our work either on the board or on the graph, making sure that we did everything right. All right, so let's get rid of those equations. We've got f of x. Let's get rid of the mouse there. Um, and I did, yeah, I'm presenting, okay. Uh, f of x. Uh, equals 100 plus 25x. And, oh, I really got that all weird. Okay, there we go. All right, we don't need that. Let's get rid of that. And then, um, oops, something went wrong there. Let's, so sometimes when something goes wrong, it's just easier just to get rid of it and then retype it again. Sometimes we're going too fast, and what's that old saying? There's never time to do it right, but always time to do it over. So and that's what's happening here. There we go. All right, so let's go a little slower now. 55 plus 10x. Okay, so on this one, the, the, the reason the lines look the way they do, so almost vertical, is because we've got really large slopes here, 25 and 10. And so when you start getting beyond about five or even five, really, but the lines get very vertical. But it doesn't change. We're still looking for the lines intersect. You can kind of draw that out, zoom in, and you can see there where they intersect. We'll click on that. And sure enough, negative 3 and 25. So that is that one. Okay, so that is all we're doing there. Uh, now let's go over for the last thing that we're going to do in this lesson, page 51. And we're going to take this into a context of a word problem. Uh, let's go ahead and, for the moment anyways, we'll stop presenting so we can see everything that we do on the board. All right, so uh, over on page 51, it says complete the following activity. Uh, use the following for information for one through four. The first is done for you. So we have dog walkers there. Dog walker A charges $5 per day and $1 per hour. And then dog walker B is $6 per day and 50 cents per hour. So A is already done, but let's just show how we did that. Um, so we have F of X, it's $5 per day, and if we let X be the number of hours, $1 per hour. Of course, if X is 1, we uh, the coefficient is 1, we typically don't write it, so that's why it just says 5 plus X. Uh, number 2, dog walker B is a g of x there's six dollars per day uh, so every day is six dollars per day and then fifty dollars or fifty cents per hour so six dollars and we're just talking about the one day so that's why we're not putting any variables with the six well that might seem a little bit confusing 
uh, $6 for the day plus 50 cents per hour. All right, so they want us to complete the table uh, there. So we have X and then we got F of X. We're not going to write the whole thing. We'll just do like they did there. And we've got 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we're just going to get the first values and just use the rate of change here, the slope, to find the other values. So when x is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 5, and we know we're going up by 1s here. So 5, that's easy, 6, 7, and 8. So that was really nice. Uh, likewise, over here, if I plug in 0 for x, 50 cents times 0 is 0, 6 plus 0 is 6. And so now we're just going to add 50 cents, so 6, 650, uh, 650 plus 50 cents is 7, and then 750. So um, that completes the table, and then um, now let's go ahead and go to Desmos and graph these. So again, we will present. We're almost done. we got one more to do after this. And get rid of these equations. And we've got f of x equals 5 plus 1x or x. Either way you enter it, it's going to register it right. It doesn't matter. Uh, g of x equals 6 plus 0.50x. And again, I hit a wrong key. There we go. Okay, so we don't see anything there, and that's because we're really up here high on the y-axis. You can see we're in the 20s. So just move it around. Kind of, if you're not sure where to go, zoom out. You'll find it, and you can zoom back in. And so... First of all, from our tables, we're expecting, so uh, when do they charge the same? Well, after two hours, remember X was the hours, they both charge seven bucks. So we're expecting them to intersect at two and seven. And so we click on where they intersect here. And sure enough, it's two and seven. So there we go. And that would be your answer. <coughs> so four was the graph that you have there in Desmos. And then five, it says interpret the solution in context. We would say at two hours, the both dog walkers charge seven dollars, and so you can see it on the table and in the graph. All right, last one. Uh, finally, um, here we go on seven two. Uh, it says number six down there below. Uh, it says they want us to uh, solve by any method, so we'll just we're just going to use Desmos here, I think. Um, and it says uh, plot the point that represents the solution and then sketch the graph. All right, so Amelia and Keith need a wedding singer. Wedding singer A is offering her services for initial $50. So let's go ahead and write this down. I think by now, hopefully we're getting comfortable with how to write these, um, that you can kind of see a pattern with them. So wedding singer A is $50 initial fee. So that doesn't have the variable, that's the fee, the initial fee, and $20 per hour. So there's our per, so 20X. Wedding uh, singer B is offering his services for an initial fee of $100. And then, um, so he charges more to start, but only $10 per hour, so 10X. Uh, when will the two singers charge the same amount? So again, the initial fee doesn't have the variable. The hourly fee for, for per hour, per month, whatever, in this case it's per hour, is, has the variable. All right, so on this one, uh, they only, they said, use any method we want. So Desmos has been good to us. So we will use Desmos. And I just realized I didn't stop presenting from the last one. So hopefully you can see that up here. So we've got F of X equals 50 plus 20X and G of X equals 100 plus 10X. And so now we're just going to type those into Desmos. Get rid of the old ones there. And we have F of X. Oh, I got that slider thing back again. F of X equals um, where are we at? 50 plus 20X. And then G of X, our other equation. And again, I am not having good luck typing today. Um, 100 plus 10X. Okay, now, probably made that more difficult than it needed to be, but that's okay. Um, so again, we're looking where the two um, 
lines intersect again it's they're very steep slopes we're going to zoom in so we can see it here you can see they intersect about right here and again you just have to tell get close to it and desmos knows what you're asking for uh five and 150. so after five hours to answer our question in context so after five hours both singers charge the same amount which is hundred and fifty dollars okay that is it for lesson seven two uh, the homework and lesson checkpoint are on pages 52 and 53 so pages 52 to 53 for the homework and lesson checkpoints hopefully that helps you, you can see Desmos is really going to speed things up and uh, let me get out of the presenting here and so there we go we have just one more lesson left to go 7.3 we will see you, and by the way, I don't know if that all got, was clear because I was presenting, but uh, there's, after five hours, both singers charge 150. There's the homework lesson checkpoint, 52 and 53. And we will see you in the next video. Good luck with that assignment.